Hey, I'm Matt Vanacore from Mask Audio, and I'm going to explain how to keep your inspiration flowing by utilizing the workflow of the browser and screens of the Complete Control MK2. So if you want to browse through your instrument library using the keyboard itself, you're going to have to instantiate an instance of the Complete Control plugin inside of GarageBand. You're also going to want to make it clean with no other plugins. So the first thing I'll do is create a software instrument in GarageBand. And thankfully, it creates the classic electric piano sound. Now you notice I can't browse through anything just quite yet. But once I go to the plugins area here, so I will close the library and open the plugins, you'll see that I've got my vintage piano plugin going. And there's no audio effects, which is why the vintage piano is a good one to use because some of the um, GarageBand choices have built-in effects all turned on. So this one's nice and clean. So I'll go to AU Instruments and choose Native Instruments and open up Complete Control. I'll grab that stereo instance of it. And there it goes. Now, that's it. That's the last I'm going to have to really tool with the computer for a while if I want to. So now I can activate the browser on the Complete Control itself. And you'll see I've got a lot of different options here. So if I open up on this left side, I've got all of my different libraries. And I can subdivide them up and kind of use keywords to only see my sampled instruments, only see my synths, or see them all. The second knob allows me to just kind of browse through. So I'll go through and let's just for fun pick out a drum instrument. So I'll scroll through. I'll grab Polyplex. I like that. So now I've got Polyplex. The right screen is showing me the patch list. So if I want to further narrow down, I can go and see like all the kits, all the kicks, all the one shot samples. So I'll just go through and grab a Polyplex patch. You tap the rotary encoder to load that current patch and away you go. So now the keyboard's configured and it's going to play Polyplex. <laughs> And as you're browsing, if you want, I'll go back to the browser, you can activate pre here. And what that does is as you scroll through, you'll hear previews of that instrument, which is really awesome. So if you decide, I want one with a bigger kick drum, there you go. Pretty cool. And notice that the light guide now corresponds to the active notes. So very handy. You'll notice that when you're in plugin mode, which is activated automatically after choosing a patch, or you can reactivate it by tapping plugin, the knobs at the bottom will correspond to the plugin itself. And so you can adjust the kit volume, the tuning the kit and stuff like that. So every single instrument will have some different controls and you can navigate through the pages of it right here. So I can edit sound one, sound two, sound three. Again, all of this without having to dive into the computer itself. I can just work the keyboard and play it as if it was a keyboard. When you combine the browsing ability of Complete Control with the workflow of the digital audio workstation control that comes with Complete Control, you can really do quite a lot. So if you want to go ahead and make a whole bunch of tracks with empty Complete Control instances, that's handy. So sometimes I'll do that. I'll open up Complete Control, not choose an instrument, and just duplicate it two or three times so that I've got three blank Complete Control tracks ready to go. Once you've done that, then you can navigate everything you need to with the keyboard and load up different instruments and record and do everything from here. So I can use that rotary encoder directional knob to go back up to the top, choose my first instrument and record something in complete control. And don't forget, of course, I can quantize right away, tighten that up a little bit, drop down and pick a different instrument, activate the browser. And this time, if I want a bass, maybe let's get a bass synth. So I'll go to synthesizers and then I'll scroll through until I find the synth that I want to use. And from here, I can use that right hand screen to, you know, narrow it down a little bit. I'll choose bass and then I'll go for a digital bass. Again, with pre here on, I get to hear it load it up, and then record. Quantize that right away just to tighten it up, and I'm building a really great track here. 
So your workflow can just be with your hands right on the instrument. And if you really learn and get to know where all these buttons are, you can build tracks very quickly, especially with enabling loop and cycle recording GarageBand because you can almost make GarageBand behave a little bit like Ableton Live by layering in the recording every time you hit the button.